Hey everyone, we're here down here at the Chiricahua Desert Museum, although technically it's a reptile zoo, down here in southwestern New Mexico. Uh, Bob Ashley, he's the basically one half of NARBC, uh, the North American Reptile Breeders Conference. This is kind of his little museum and setup here. They have a bunch of species of Grotalis, i.e. rattlesnakes, specifically around here in the Cloud Islands part of uh, New Mexico and Arizona, and we're going to see some really cool stuff. Let's go check it out. So cool. So cool. So like I said before, not only do they have a very large and extensive collection of living reptiles, they also have an outdoor gardens area as well as the, Opa the Apache Native American Museum. They also have a huge extensive collection of all things reptile memorabilia, of artwork with amazing Tel Hicks artwork and so many other uh, absolutely fantastic artists, as well as collectibles and things related to them and snake bite kits which Bob Ashley is really really proud of and it's really cool and I'll show you those in just a second but just the sheer amount of just reptile Shangri-La here is incredible when I say that their collection is extensive I mean it it is without exaggeration just the sheer amount of just of art and history and collectibles and just kind of fun unique items is breathtaking and it, it literally it's crazy how much is in such a small space i mean it's not it's not tiny by any means it's just there's so much in there and the especially with the art and the sculptures it's crazy how much detail and how many species are represented there it's I mean, there's so many different ones, Monomatas, Gila Monsters, Red-Sided Garter Snakes, Toge Geckos, and the color and the realism and the detail is just crazy. Some of them look real, like I had to do a double take when I saw the Northern Blue Tongue Skink Sculpture. It's it's crazy how how accurate and how amazing they look, and in addition to the artwork, there are some kind of taxidermy type things where, you know, there's skeletons and skulls and tortoise shells, which is really cool because then you can actually see how closely resembling the, the sculptures and all the artwork is to the real deal there. It's just amazing. And then combined with all the Tel Hicks artwork on the walls and everything else is just crazy. In addition to just the all the artwork there's these crazy little uh like all the different drinks like mostly liquor and alcohol but there's like soft drinks and energy drinks and all these weird things that are all inspired from reptiles and, and, and arachnids and spiders and snakes and all sorts of other weird crazy little drinks but it's just a little it's just collections of all things reptiles it's so cool in addition to that there's also there's a lot of history in there there's books and notes and catalogs and articles and pictures of different biologists and people in the hobby that are on the walls and things that they contributed to as well as kind of pieces of history in general like pictures of the performers that had like the big berms and the boas on them that kind of sp spread reptiles across the country different books that have been published as well as um, Bob Ashley's snake bite kit collection. So I brought that up earlier. This is it right here. There's over, I don't know how many are, easily over a hundred different snake bite kits that are theoretically used to treat different snake bites. Their effectiveness is probably questionable of some of those things, but it's just really interesting to see another part of herpticulture represented here. And it's just so cool. We have about a hundred species, over a hundred species mm -hmm. of different animals in general. Okay. Um, and we have 45 venomous. So what exactly is a crotalus? I know that I know for sure, but what exactly would say a very good generic term be described as a crotalus? So it's a pit viper. Okay. It always has a rattle. Right. Um, 
Well, there are some well, rattlesnakes that don't have rattles. Catalina You're right. Island. You're right. Catalina You're Island right. rattlesnakes <laughs> don't have rattles. Um, but the word crotalus comes from the Greek word crotalon, which means rattle. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. It's so long. I know. I know they usually will fall off with sheds. Do you see them get that long very often? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's quite the anomaly. It's a very long one. Yeah, like even even the rattle on the other one is still pretty long. Mm -hmm. Is it just with this species or? No, they're just very careful with their rattle, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, well that works. It's always a, a treasure to find when you're cleaning. You find a little rattle in the corner. That's so cool. Oh, it's a Hopi rattlesnake. That's really cool. They're very similar to, um, I think it's the, it's a, it, I know it's a subspecies of prairie rattlesnake, but it's very indistinguishable from them other than basically their size. But they're still really, really cool. Named after the one of the few Native American tribes that actually, you know, didn't outright, were just distrustful or worried about snakes in general. I, I think, like, specifically with a lot of the, and it's not just the Westerns, I think with a lot of the, the crotalists in general, there's a lot of social behavior that I think is more apparent with these guys. Oh, yeah. Um, like, I had heard that there was someone doing studies of gopher tortoises in Florida, and they were finding large eastern diamondbacks that were occupying the same burrow multiple times throughout, like, a three-year span. And that even the gopher tortoises would be communal there. Would be like a fem like males obviously go from burrow to burrow looking for, but females would actually go to other female burrows and be there for several days. But it's just so weird that like you don't think that snake like everyone has that image of their heads where, you know, other than like a garter snake or something because of like the big dens, although mm -hmm. they do that too. Um, you know, they're these solitary eat each other all the time animals, but. Maybe not. That's just <laughs> so really cool. The best story that I ever heard. Uh, it was from a photographer, and he was photographing Western Diamondback dens, mm -hmm. and he came across, he saw some babies in the, in the sunlight between the rocks, and so he was, he was getting closer and closer, and he saw a gravid female near the babies. So obviously they weren't her babies. Right. But when he got close, she threw a coil in front of him, between him and the babies, oh, that wow. weren't hers. And when he backed off, she would retreat and go back into her little coil. Huh. And when he got close again, she would throw it back over. So, she, you know, was she protecting those babies that weren't even hers, right. but they were part of the same den? That's so cool. We don't know. Like that may Check out these cute little night lizards. Night lizards are a really cool species of lizard found here, um, kind of all throughout the southwestern United States. And this is actually one of the species where they've, where scientists have documented that there's communal living even within their own family. So like grandparents all the way down through the generations that are sharing the same um, hides on a nightly regular basis, feeding in the same areas, and have been documented in the same, literal exact same like square footage for multiple years in a row. So these little guys are something that we will eventually learn a whole lot more about reptile behavior from. This particular Mojave rattlesnake was actually the, at the time of acquisition, which is well over a decade ago, was actually the largest, uh, spe the largest specimen, at least as far as length goes, of this species in the world, which is super, super cool, but who knows, by now there could be bigger ones out there, you know? There's always the bigger fish. Let's talk about this guy here. So there's this hybrid right here. Is he a natural intergrade that you know of? He is a natural intergrade. He was found okay. in the wild, um, one of only a handful that has been found in the wild before. He was found in far east Texas, okay. where the, the timber rattlesnake population overlaps with the western diamondback. And if you're familiar with both of those species, you can look at him and tell that he is a combination of right. both of them. And out of the different species or categories of venomous snakes, there's the pit vipers, so which also includes like gaboon vipers mm -hmm. and death and puff adders Puffs. and things like mm -hmm. that. 
And then there's the alapids, which are the coral, the corals, which are the only ones we have in the new world. Yes. And then mambas and um, sea snakes and cobras and, and, cobras and mm -hmm. taipans. And then there's the rear fang venomous, like you said, where it's not actually a true fang delivery system. It's, correct me if I'm wrong here, it's kind of like a little ridged hollow tooth that they say it has to like work and chew on, but they're pretty good at it. Some of them, like boom slangs, are great at it. <laughs> yes, boom slang. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. I mean, even like um, like uh, some of the the mangrove snakes, like the mm -hmm. boiga or even the vine snakes, can be really too. Um, the longer you work with venomous snakes, the more urates you breathe in, right. the more skin you you touch, the shed skin, you you do develop allergies. And, but if you clean it with bleach, it denatures the protein, and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So, yeah, I've, I've heard that, that that is, in fact, the case with, like, people who work with, like, a lot of the spitting cobras and stuff. Oh, yes. Just cleaning their enclosures, they develop that. Is that So that's the case with really any of them because it's mm -hmm. just kind of, it's just part of them. So, yeah. like you said. It's in the air. Every time you disturb the mulch, if there's... If there's any feces or anything that goes up into the air, you're breathing oh, it in. Oh, wow, cool. I wasn't sure, like, if the proteins are not, they get, like, digested or broken down. Well, if you're working with venoms like this, and mm -hmm. especially if you're processing venom, it's really important to wear a respirator so things like that don't right, happen. Right, right. But, yeah, just, just from being in contact regularly for long periods of time with venomous snakes can make you allergic. One of the few species of snakes I actually know something about in here, because we all know my uh, knowledge of any and all venomous snakes is lacking, although, you know, Crotalus, Crotalus, I will always mess that up. It's a little bit better, but this is a Baird's rat snake. It's an absolutely amazing and stunning specimen of an adult. These guys are so cool. I love North American rat snakes. Such an underappreciated, just, you know, variety of species. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at him try body. That's adorable. Oh, you dropped it. Like, where's mine? Found it. Oh, I know. See, he went over to the cup. They're so smart. These guys are really cool. And this is why our acne attacks us when we have crickets. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that is 100% correct. So I like these guys more than long-tailed grass lizards. I think they're prettier, too. Do they have... Do, do they kind of like color up for like hormonally for breeding or anything like that like some of the no. lizards do? So the coolest thing about whiptails is that they are female and they can reproduce parthenogenically. Oh, they're in, like morning geckos? They're an entirely parthenogenic mm -hmm. species? Oh, I did not know that. So the male is not needed, but if you put two of them together, they're more likely to breed because they wrestle yeah. as if they were doing male-on-male -male combat, and that wrestling will spur them Interesting. To, to reproduce. Yeah, it's brilliant. So I don't know enough about lizards, but that's so cool. Like, we're not done either. I know. I know. <laughs> they, never, they never stop. They never are. you go. Yeah, these guys are, are from the from the bush. They're locales from around here. Cool. Um, this is the as big as they get. Mm -hmm. That one obviously is is a bit bigger. Hi, <laughs> he's, a little, he's a little chunkier. Um, but they actually so they're not a morph. You know, nope. they just came from the wild. Um, just your normal normal pretty gophers. And they had the prettiest baby. I can get it out. Here, I'll just put this one on your other hand. Sounds good. Hi, little girl. I always forget pit males are bigger. <laughs> so much bigger. Oh, oh, man, you are very cold. Hee 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 hee. Come here, baby girl. So. I love the tails. You're so pretty. This one baby. Oh, man. Look. I mean, she looks completely different from these two. Look at that white. That's crazy. The saddles are like vibrant looking. Look at the difference. That's nuts. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know genetically what is going on. Um, I, she's just the most beautiful gopher I've ever seen. That's crazy. I've never seen such a high yellow gold mm -hmm. Sonoran before. I mean, I'm still new to it, but man, oh man, I know a couple guys that would... Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's nuts. Yeah, and she has not produced, these. this pair has not produced another one to look like her. So, of course, we had to keep her. That's nuts. 
Yeah. Yeah, just looking at the differences in their in their face coloration. You're a pretty little one. Yes, yeah, she knows. So she knows cool. it. <laughs> so they have this really cool just little kind of like character and like model uh, like a little thing for all these major players of the reptile hobby like our boy Tommy Crutchfield, Mark O'Shea, Bill Love, even Don Hamper. But guys, look at this. <laughs> there is clearly no better way to describe or or really show anything that is Kevin McCurley right here, guys. This is it. So it was absolutely amazing to come out here to the Chiricahua Desert Museum. Certainly a little bit of a longer road trip, but I think this was, this is a place that should be a stop or at least a definitely a destination for any snake lover, reptile keeper, herper, lover of animals, whatever may have you because just the amount of animal diversity and knowledge and culture and art is amazing as well as their Apache Museum next door was amazing and I couldn't really have it on our you know 15 minute video but it was great big 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 thank you to the curator Rachel for giving us her time of day as well as Bob Ashley for the like 30 seconds in and out that he popped in so hopefully you enjoy this video and we'll check you next time